Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Souders, Slender Cat Outdoors, back with you again this evening for another tackle. It's about a lot of information on, you know, how to catch it, how, what to do, and how to keep this bait. Uh, so this is kind of like a little series uh, for the next couple weeks, uh, barring no major, you know, things like me having to work late again, but a little, you know, series that I'm wanting to do to kind of help you guys learn how to catch what is arguably uh, the best catfishing bait there is out on, out there uh, to use. So, as always, if this is your first time visiting the channel, Slender Cat Outdoors, I want to thank you guys for joining. Uh, make sure you guys you know, are hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you guys are hitting that notification bell. That way that you can be notified when we do put out new videos. Um, I am trying my hardest to make sure that we get new videos out each and every week. Um, right off the bat, I want to do a little... Uh, you know, make sure you guys can hear me good. So, uh, audio test, give me a thumbs up, make sure I can hear that. And I'm going to get the question box opened up tonight. So, if you guys got questions on this subject, make sure you're hitting me up in the comments section. And as always, we get our, you know, our information, um, ideas for videos from you all in the comments section. So, Make sure that you're leaving your questions in the comments on what you guys want to, you know, want to hear, uh, want to know more about, uh, you know, anything, anything like that. Let's get this pulled up here. Hope everybody is having a great day wherever you're at. It is beautiful here. The weather is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the last time we talked, um, I forgot to do a giveaway. So make sure make sure i do not forget that this time actually i'm gonna write it i'll we'll make myself a note i'm gonna put it down so that i know not to forget that herring let's just jump right into it i mean um, for any of you guys that know me you know that i love to use uh gizzard shad gizzard shad that is probably uh, one of my favorite baits there is uh but arguably uh skipjack herring is all right let me know if we're back on, I uh, had a little hiccup right there. I'm going to give it just a minute and make sure that uh, we're back online. Uh, not sure what happened right there, but I uh, want to make sure that we're back up running and everybody can hear me well. Sorry about that. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, I uh, had a question. I had a question on when or when we're leaving to come back to uh, come down to Tennessee for the Sea Arc tournament. Uh, we're actually getting ready to leave here in a day. Uh, actually, um, tomorrow night. You know, if everything barring barring everything goes well, we'll be leaving tomorrow night and uh, get down there. And hopefully, uh, there's been some people down there catching some big fish. And and I want to get down there and join them. I can't wait. It's excited. I'm excited. Uh, be joining uh, Larry Lang will be joining me for. A lot of you guys out there that watch Catfish Weekly, uh, you know Doc Lang. Um, his son, Larry Lang, will be down there uh, fishing with me. Uh, super good guy. Um, his dad, well, Doc, will be down there fishing, so we get to hang out with them some as well. So we'll be leaving here just about a you know, 24-hour uh, period. Can't wait. Excited. Super excited about getting down there, back down there. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's get back to the topic for tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about skipjack herring. Okay, uh, so real quick, you know, skipjack is a bait fish um, that some people call Tennessee tarpon. Um, you know, there's different. They kind of are similar to an American shad, in in the sense that they're oily, uh, very good bloody. You know, great cut bait. Okay, uh, skipjack herring can be found. You know, at the best of my knowledge, in the Ohio River, Tennessee River, uh, Cumberland, um, Kentucky, Green River, uh, Mississippi River. 
um, and I'm sure there's some other uh, rivers that are in that area, but anything that is really connected to the Ohio River uh, in a sense of any way normally will have skipjack herring in it and can be caught, okay? Um, so, you know, you know, skipjack herring is something that, uh, you know, a lot of people are trying to learn how to keep alive. Uh, some of the people in the striper side of things are able to keep some alive. Uh, but for most of us, it is going to be something that we're just going to throw on, put on ice or a salt solution, which is something that, uh, you know, if you guys follow J Null Zero or regular dude fishing, um, I know he has done a brine video. Uh, I plan on doing one as well. It is just about to where I figure it's going to stay warm enough that I can do that little challenge thing that I got challenged with to find out what actually happens to the temperature of the water whenever we're doing this. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Got a question. Okay, Roger. Uh, Roger brought up a good good uh, question here, and I want to make sure and touch on this. Uh, he says that they are short boats for the fishing for freedom in Quincy, Illinois. Um, for anybody that doesn't know what that is, you get to take a long, it's like a, a whole weekend long deal where you get to take a veteran out. Uh, you get to spend time with them, eat dinner. Uh, I, I believe they, they might even like shoot trap or shoot guns. You get to fish a tournament with them. Uh, all, all sorts of things. It's a great thing. Roger, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it with uh, what I have going on, but if anybody in here has um, information, I know there's some guys in here that watch it regularly that go to it every year. Make sure you're leaving some information, maybe a link, um, somewhere where that anybody can find information on how to become a boater for that, uh, for that event. And that, once again, that is Fishing for Freedom Quincy, uh, in Quincy, Illinois. Good fishing out there. Uh, great fishing in that area. So, um, Anthony, I'll be fishing uh, Willer Lake. Uh, be fishing a Sea Arc tournament, which is uh, Willer, um, Wilson, and I think you can lock up. I'm not for sure. Uh, but so that's where we'll be fishing at this weekend is the Tennessee Lower Tennessee around uh, Willer uh, Willer Lake area. Okay, so one of the uh, top questions that I get a lot of times are where to find skipjack or where you know where to catch them okay so that's kind of where we're gonna start now we know what skipjack is uh, they are a long uh, more slender you know style of bait kind of look like a torpedo they are super super fun to catch I mean if you have if you have kids that you're trying to get into fishing uh, when these skipjack are running you know make sure you get them out make sure that you uh, you get a rod and reel in their hands because they can be phenomenal. You can wear some kids out uh, with this. So where to find skipjack? 90% uh, of the time, you know, we're going to be going to some sort of lock and dam. Okay. Now, not all the time. And, and we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit uh, in this as well. But 90% of the time, we're going to want to go to a lock and dam somewhere that's going to constrict their movement upriver okay like a lot of bait fish this time of year these fish want to migrate you know upriver to spawn and they're going to get conjugated or you know kind of held up at these at these dams and it makes good areas you know the minnows come up there uh you know following the skipjack uh shad you know thread fins stripers white bass all this stuff comes up there and it's all like a food chain reaction style thing okay so, I got my handy dandy notepad back out tonight. Somebody gets to see some drawings. And I know, I know you guys are probably excited about that. Stonefly says he put some hurting on some skipjacks. Hey, buddy, I hope to, the, I hope to uh, Thursday morning we need a bunch of bait. But, uh, oh, uh, real quick before I forget about it, I want to, you know, uh, let you guys know if there's anybody on here that's fishing the Cabela's King Cat Classic in Galpus, Ohio, uh, this weekend, 
Um, John, uh, Jay Newell Zero, John Newell, regular dude fishing. Uh, he's pro I think, I'm pretty sure he's in the chat tonight. Uh, John, if you were in the chat tonight, make sure you leave a link. Some way these guys can get a hold of you. He is going to be trying to bring Skipjack back uh, for anybody that uh, is going to be fishing that tournament um, to kind of help you guys out with bait. Uh, around here, the river's up. Uh, the bait's not really in, you know, real great. And, you know, he's going to try to help the fishermen out, bring some bait, and uh, get you guys good fresh bait from uh, south, good fresh skipjack. So make sure, you, uh, make sure you hit him up. So let's talk about where to catch skipjack, okay? Now, I'm going to draw a dam. And I know I'm going to draw it. Eh, let's draw it this way because let's call this, this is the lock and dam here. We're going to call it, uh, let's say, Willer because that's, because uh, I hear they're catching a bunch of skipjack down there right now. Okay? You got, this is the hydro plant. So, you got the hydro plant. Now over here, over here you'll have, you know, the spill gates, the actual dam. Uh, if they're not running water out of the spill gates, all your water will be coming through this hydro dam. Now, something that we, you want to keep in, you know, keep, go ahead and get on your phones. Uh, some of us have it on there already, but if you don't, is, is the TVA app, okay? Now, what that will do is that will tell you how much water they are generating out of this hydro plant. Okay, and that's a good, and the reason I'm telling you that is that is a good thing to know. Uh, check if they're not running any water out of here, but they're running water out of maybe the dam below or the dam above, then you may want to go to one of them dams. If they're running water out of this dam, but, you know, they're running a lot or little, that's just good information to know and kind of have an idea of where you want to go. Okay, so we got the, we got the Willer Dam. We got the hydro plant now we got current coming out here these are big old boils big old boils coming out through here and all this current coming down through here okay now over here you got a bank it comes down maybe it might cut this way cut back in you know make little points so you got this current coming down through here sometimes these will these fish will be right up in this current you know uh, sometimes they'll be right off you know, you got the current coming down through here. You know, have like a little wall coming out here, okay? Well, that current comes down through here and it makes a seam, a seam right here. That seam can be good. And also on the bank side, anywhere uh, for guys that are bank fishermen, you know, this is a good place if you're a, you know, if you're a boat fisherman. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's funny, John. I'm I, funny. I need some. I need some crayons. But uh, so you know, this can be a good place if you're a boat fisherman. If you're trying to catch them off the, you know, out of a boat off this seam line over here. If you're uh, catching them from the bank, you know, the bank side, where these little these little points will kick out, and off these points will cause seam lines down through here. Okay, now these seam lines may kick out in the middle, or they may kick out straight down just depending on you know how much current, how the current's flowing, will make a big difference. But these seam lines are where you want to, you know, you want to try because those will conjugate the minnows and obviously, you know, those skipjack will be coming up through there off those good thick seam lines. Okay. And that's going to help you uh, you know, catch more more of those skipjack coming up through there. And it sometimes it's one seam line, sometimes it's all over. Sometimes you can you know, Ray Charles can cast out there and catch them. It doesn't matter. But sometimes you really have to be pinpointed on certain key or certain seam lines within that area to really be able to, you know, produce a lot of skipjack. Now, is there any questions on that before we kind of move forward? Uh, make sure you're, you know, once again, make sure you're, you're leaving your questions in there. Let's see. Uh, Clayton Johnston. Um, 
if you know if you never can seem to find skipjack um, in the comments tonight uh, please leave me you know leave me some questions or some information about kind of like your area where you're from let's see if we can't you know uh, help you out on on your area specifically okay Okay, so Roger, uh, got a question here. Roger asked, how, how do you determine if you should, uh, you know, re retrieve something really fast or retrieve something slow? And I'm going to touch on that a little bit right now, but uh, it's a good question whenever we get into the rigs and, and things like that to, uh, you know, uh, really dig into a little bit more. But Roger, uh, you got to play around with it. You got to try different things you know you may uh you know if there's more than one of you make sure that your you know one of you is doing something different than the other if you both are not you know if you're not really on skipjack and you're not really you know slaying a bunch of them you're having a hard time trying to figure it out one of you do something completely different than the other whether it be collar uh, retrieve um, depth you know something of that nature until you key in on the specifics on where they're at and what they want, okay? Uh, West Virginia Catfish 85, he asks, any pointers for Winfield Locks on the Canal River? Um, yeah, there's, you know, I don't know if they're there yet, uh, West Virginia Catfish, but, uh, you know, depending, you know, there's right off the bank, you know, you can't really get up there close enough in a boat. You really got to fish that off the bank but normally there's a good thick seam line that runs down that bank and you can catch them there. So just, you know, look, you can distinctly see, you know, anywhere that seam is going to kick off that bank, you will see it running down through there hard. And that's where you want to be able to be able to fish is right, you know, right on that seam. Okay. All right, Clayton Johnston, um, and what I'm going to do, Clayton, is I'm going to read this uh, right here for anybody that's in the central Arkansas area. Uh, I don't know that area specifically, but, you know, for anybody that might read this or watch this, uh, they might be able to help you out, Clayton. Uh, Clayton says, I'm from the central Arkansas and don't uh, live close to any kind of hydroelectric uh, dam. People tell me I can find them in the mouths of rivers. Arkansas River has them, but I haven't caught them yet. Okay, and this is, uh, Clayton, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, you know, um, John Newell, yes, I was talking about the TVA uh, um, map that I, I get. It's Lake Info map, uh, you know, to tell you the levels of the hydro, how much water to push now. So, Clayton, um, you know, you, uh, no matter where you live, and this is going to take us kind of into the next segment of where to find them at, okay? And that's what this, this video tonight is mainly about, is where to find them. And then next week, we're going to kind of go into, uh, you know, breaking down how to catch them. So, you know, I said at the beginning of this, 90% of the time that you can catch these, these skipjacks mainly at dams, Okay. Now that's 90% of the time, but there is also places, and that will that will change depending on where you live. Okay, for instance, the Mississippi River doesn't have dams until you get to the upper parts of it. Uh, does that mean that there's no skipjack able to be caught in the lower parts of the Mississippi River? No. Uh, so if your river has um, you know has skipjack in it, and you know that for a fact, some things that we can do is look for uh, if you have wing dikes, they would they would normally cause big you know thick seam lines. Um, those those can be good places to catch them. Uh, something that I found personally um, in the Mississippi River, being able to go out 
and fish the Mississippi River monsters the last few years is let's see here you have you got the river you know runs down through there but you have the wing dikes okay that come out and there might be like a, a blowout right here in the center of them where that current's coming through and it may be you know halfway in, in the middle of that wing dike uh, maybe closer out here to the end or, or bank but there's current that flows through that okay and we was able to find skipjack you know on those seam lines of that blowout now is that going to be every wing dike is that going to be you know every place that you find that no um, it it may have been just a kind of uh, a spot you know an area specific or it might be something that you know you're going to have to go out and test and try numerous times on and finding those you know where they want to be or places that will hold them on a normal basis uh, a lot of it's going to be trial and error um, not every not every one of them you know is going to be a uh, success something uh, something else uh, that you know you can take advantage of too um, if you have if you have these in your areas are old blowed up lock and dams um, and this is going to be you know I find that this is going to be a lot of times more in the summertime uh, after kind of after they've made their huge push to the dam and you know you're not really finding them in high numbers uh, if for instance in the Ohio River we have old lock and dams that are blowed up and the wall will be you know where the lock wall come down through and the dam come across here uh, this the actual the dam itself would be blowed up you know big rock uh, rubble across the river and one side will be nothing you know that just goes straight to the bank but the other side will be like maybe the old lock walls that come down through there uh, sometimes you know early in the morning real late at night you can find those skipjack will come up and school up on minnows coming up and eating on algae and and plankton and stuff around around those old lock walls and you know in a sense you got to be real uh, careful you know real quiet real kind of stealthy like and but you can also pick them up around there around places like that um, other good places are let's see here straw the river okay we got a river I kind of that's the river you got the current coming down down through here okay let's say there's like a big rock point and this can be kind of in the middle of nowhere uh, but you got a, a big rock point that kind of sticks out right there and as that current comes around that bend it makes a nice current seam right out through here from time to time those can be uh, you know good places to find them as well so um, let's see here hopefully uh, Clayton that will kind of help you you know uh, in your success and make sure that you you know as you keep trying as you keep uh, uh, you know progressing with this that uh, if you have not hit me up on messenger yet hit me up on messenger and ask some questions uh, you know as as you try things I'd like to know the information as well to be able to share it uh, to others um, yeah John John just mis mentioned something that's very very good as well uh, old boat ramps or not old boat ramps good boat ramps um, depending on how they're angled into the river uh, will you know you know cause good thick seams just about anywhere that is going to create you a good thick seam line bridges uh, barge tie ups you know boat ramps um, things like that you know you're going to be able to find skipjack around those uh, you know from time to time maybe not all the time but from time to time um, one last uh, place that we, I want to talk about that you can find them let's see here uh, one last place I want to talk about you know that you can actually find them and this is kind of later in the year 
uh, you're going to find them. They're going to be smaller. They're not going to be your, your big skipjack, but they're going to be your smaller skipjack. Uh, sewer discharges, um, or like if you have a water discharge from a city or uh, a state, something like that, you know, you can, uh, a lot of times you can find them there uh, could, because there's current coming into the river. And there may not be current anywhere else, but you can find, you know, find some there. Um, stonefly, you mentioned something that I just, uh, that I actually meant to mention to uh, Clayton. Um, creek mouths, where muddy water meets green water, uh, can be good places, um, you know, to find them as well. Now, a lot of these places that we're talking about may not be huge numbers, uh, may not, you know, um, you may not be able to go and catch them there like you can at, uh, at a lock and dam in the springtime. So, you know, something that a lot of us do that, uh, that I highly recommend, you know, you guys to do is to, you know, go, uh, catch, catch you some in the springtime, you know, not, not over amounts, but just catch a few that way you can put, uh, put some in a freezer and, you know, have some to use, but, you know, take advantage of the guys that are, uh, you know, doing this for a living. You know, these guys like uh, Jano, uh, Regular Dude Fishing, um, uh, Big Cat Bait Company, uh, you know, some of the other people that, you know, that do this and catch them on a regular basis, you know, take advantage of them. Um, you know, your time on the water versus time catching bait can, you know, can matter to a lot of people. It matters to me, and I don't mind showing out a few bucks to uh, catch, you know, buy fresh bait rather than to... Uh, you know, try to go out and spend half a day or a day, you know, catching bait. So, let's see if there's any questions here. Hopefully everybody coming into town, I'm going to miss it. Um, I really, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy fishing the Cabela's King Cat here in, in God Pliss. You know, the, uh, they, there's a, it's a good pool. It, you know, they make, uh, I mean, them flatheads, them flatheads are on right now for anybody that's coming. Uh, you know, flatheads are, are biting good. Um, make sure, you know, that, make sure you got some good bait because you're going to need it, fellas. I mean, the river's coming up, but, but them, them flatheads are, are really, really coming on fire. But, uh, you know, something that a lot of people don't take, you know, don't target a lot around here. And, you know, I, I see some people and hear some people say that they don't want to come to this area because uh, they don't know how to catch flatheads. You know, there, you know, there's good blue cats. Uh, Dieter, let's, let's see. Dieter asked a good question. John, um, if you can tell everybody you know what your uh, what your prices are how much you know you pack them uh things like that make sure that you're leaving them in the uh you know leaving that stuff in the comments i wish i thought about this uh beforehand i wish i would have i could have got some from him so you guys could have seen uh i'll do better next time uh dieter dieter wants me to uh, make sure i show everybody what a seam line looks like and that is a good that's a good thing so I think Dieter just likes my just likes my drawings. <laughs> so, all right, we got the what you have. We're gonna drill the bank over here, and I'm gonna make a point that comes out and kind of come back down. Okay. Now we got water flow coming down through here. Now as that water flows down through here, it's gonna hit that point right there, and it's just gonna be it's gonna the current's going to change the direction of that current. Okay. Now this this water over here can can sometimes be coming backwards, or it can be slack uh, slack water. But then this current here is going to kind of kick out, and then and then go back down. Okay. Now it, and depending on how much water they're running, how hard they're running, uh, you know, will depend on you know how hard this seam may kick out. You know, it may kick out just a little bit and then go down. Okay. 
but you just want to look for that good thick fast water that water is going to be moving fast and it's going to hit that and then change direction and then this water in this area is going to kind of look like a slower slacker uh, maybe even a reverse current uh, style of water and in that seam line where those two where those two styles of water meet together uh, is where you know that's what the seam line is and that's what it looks like okay let's see if we got any more questions and hopefully hopefully that answered uh, hopefully I've done a good job of explaining what that you know seam line looks like All right, so next week, uh, oh, uh-huh, just about done it again. Just about done it again. Okay. How are we going to do this one? Let's do the giveaway because I forgot to do it last time. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, do an offshore tackle uh, little kit. It comes with a, a hat, um, line clippers, a little cooler. Um, I'll throw in a, a, a sabiki pack from Diachi and uh, maybe throw in some, uh, some other little things as well. So let's make sure we don't have no more questions here. For everybody watching, pick a number between 1 and 20. First, first person to get it, we will hook you up with that little giveaway pack. Roger. All right, let's see it. Number 17. Roger, you got her, buddy. All right, so thanks, everybody, for that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed tonight's video. Um, make sure next week we're going to be talking, getting into, uh, getting into the tackle that we use, okay? Uh, be digging into, um, you know, some different, uh, different rigs, uh, you know, that we tie up, how we tie them up, why we tie them up, uh, things like that. So I want to make sure that you all know I, I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate everybody joining in. Uh, the support you guys give me, it's great. I, you know, I truly appreciate it. Um, make sure that you hit that thumbs up, you share. Uh, I think John J. Newell, I don't know if sure if he is or not, but I think he might be going live tonight. Uh, run over there, check his channel out. Make sure you check Dieter uh, Melhorn channel, uh, Fishing out. Um, he does good videos, good information, uh, good group of men. So I want to make sure uh, give them props. Thank everybody for watching. Make sure you tune in next week, and you all have a good week.